So coach, how have the walkthroughs that you guys have been doing the last couple of weeks prepared you to now be starting practice full speed? Uh, well, it's just, it's just nice. Like we're in there right now, just going over our install and at least they know our verbiage and the signals and how to get lined up. And um, it's, it's sure heck better than it was. Obviously it's not, we haven't, we don't feel comfortable or good by any stretch of the imagination, but it's a lot better than it was for sure. Okay, Alfredo, you're, you're next, Evan, you're on deck. Hey, Coach, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing good. Um, my question is regarding uh, conditioning. How are the guys um, being um, um, working on that aspect? I know that um, something could be limited with everything that's going on. Uh, how would you describe the conditioning thus far with, with the team? Uh, we're, we're really pleased with that just because of Ryan Philo and his staff how organized they've been. You know, we couldn't start out, but couldn't have it eight in the weight room because uh, by the time you put two coaches in there, that's 10. So you can imagine how many hours a day Ryan Filo and his group were working uh, to get 99 players taken care of in groups of 10. I mean, you can just do the math and know how hard that was on Ryan. Uh, then we got to increase the groups a little bit larger and a little bit larger. Uh, but our kids have been such an inspiration. Uh, they're all in there, they're masked on strength coaches with their mask on. And, uh, you know, as usual, my kids have inspired me. And uh, I wear the mask way more than I ever thought I would. When I work out, I wear mine in there uh, just because they're doing it. So, and it's for protection as well. Uh, but I think it's great role modeling for us to do it because the kids are doing it. And uh, our kids are in as good a shape as they can be. And uh, their mentality and the volunteer workouts uh, very few were missed the entire summer. Our, our summer, our kids' mindsets have been fantastic, and uh, it's just a joy to be around them every day. Okay, Evan and Greg, you're on deck. Oh, my bad. Okay, uh, Coach, just what is the mentality as you're beginning fall camp on Friday? Do you have to take some steps back? versus what you would normally do when you're starting fall camp just because of how tough this this off season has been for you guys? Um, the, the hardest part is we don't know exactly when we're going to play. Um, you know, what if a game jumps up August 29th? Uh, what if we don't play to September 12th? Uh, that's the hardest part is how much to lean on right now. And, uh, so that, that's, that's been the hardest part, to be very honest with you. The second hardest part is, you know, like for breakfast, uh, only half of them can be in there at a time. So you've got to double schedule breakfast. You've got to double schedule lunch. You've got to double schedule supper. You've got to double schedule meeting time because we can't all be in the building at the same time. Uh, just a lot of, just a, you know, kind of like it's been uh, since – Seems like 2020 started 20 years ago, right? It's just the way this year has been. Uh, but we're so grateful. We remind our kids every day. We're not, we're not going to have that mindset. We're, we're going to be grateful for each day. We're not going to worry about tomorrow at all. And we're going we're to have a great day today. And our, our kids are really bought into that. And uh, we're living that. And uh, that, Those are the hardest obstacles right now. And then, and then also, as far as the concepts that you want to bring in, uh, you know, beyond everything that you have to do with the challenges surrounding the pandemic, this is, of course, your first year, though I know I'm sure this age, this, uh, this year has aged you by, by three. Um, just how, how difficult or, or how pleased are you with the team's ability to sort of pick up what you want to put down here in this upcoming season? Um, I'm very thrilled with their effort. Uh, this week's culture filler is perfect effort, and uh, we've really been hammering that. Uh, you know, each week it's a different pillar for us. Um, we, we've not gone out there yet and had perfect execution, uh, and we're on air most of the time. Uh, you know, we were – you don't want to ever have penalties, but you sure don't want to have penalties before the snap or after the snap. And uh, that, that's where we've got to really clean up. And I, I want – we're going to have to be simple but we can't be predictable. Uh, so that's a fine line. And uh, obviously the better your players are, uh, the more simple you can be because you're going to have more success. So we just got to get all that ironed out. And I'm, I, I wouldn't, I couldn't ask for a better group of kids 
to go do this with. They're, they're extremely excited. I, I cannot tell you how proud I am of how they've handled all this. Um, with what all is going on in the country, the, the, I don't, we don't have any of that here in San Antonio. Our kids are fired up to be here, really buying into what we're doing, and uh, we have nothing but positives to say about our kids right now. Thanks, Coach. Greg, Thank uh, you. Greg, you're next, and then Hector, and then JJ. Coach, are you still planning to hold the meetings on Zoom and to, to split offense and defense as we get going here into fall camp? And how long do you think that'll go? No, well, we've done all Zoom until now. Uh, we're going to start with that. We'll change uh, starting tomorrow uh, when they report, you know. Uh, so we'll, we'll have social distancing. We'll have on our masks. We'll all be spread out. Uh, team meeting will be on the field. Uh, but, like, our um, – while the offense is in the building, spread out, defense will be, you know, doing something else. And when the defense is in here, offense will be outside. Um, so that's the way we're going to – so we're, we're going to start meeting with our players, obviously six feet with the mask. Uh, we've really – you know, we're, we're using our entire building for just the offense. And we're using our entire building for just the defense. They're not in here at the same time. Uh, Dan Bellamy and Nick have done a fantastic job of, you know, outlining all that for us and where we're all supposed to be. And we're fixing to meet. So as we get off here, going over it one more time just to make sure we're all uh, practicing, you know, social distancing. And are the two units going to work against each other on the field or is that still separate for now? Uh, it'll be very, very limited. Uh, I think the only time we're coming together uh, in that first day is period uh, 20 and 21. Uh, the rest of it is all separate. So there'll be about 10 minutes of where we'll uh, be around each other. Uh, we're not obviously gonna tackle all we've got on is helmets. So we're just going to touch off. And uh, that's where that go. Hector, you're up. JJ, you're on deck. Coach. You know, you mentioned a little while ago not knowing um, the, we're this close and you still don't know your schedule in, in terms of what's going to happen, when, and, and things along those lines. As tough as it is for, for a grown men, like grown, grown men to deal with, how do you convey that to 18, 19-year-olds and keep them calm and keep them sane, for lack of a better term, given the reality of, of what they're facing here in the next couple of months? It's a, it's a great question. It's something we talk about all the time, um, but it's part of our culture uh, pillars. Again, it's, it's, you have to be where your feet are. It goes into, you know, mental toughness. I mean, it's, it's easy to say, but it's hard to live. Uh, but it has brought up our level of awareness of how grateful we are to just have today. And uh, so I know it's, there's a lot of unknowns, but there are, in life as well. These are very teachable moments. And uh, we feel very confident if we take care of UTSA, if we bubble ourselves and we can take care of our team, there's going to be somebody wanting to play. I know Dr. Compost and our administration is working hard on trying to get us to a 12-game schedule, but we know we've got 10 right now. But do we really know? Do you ever really know? I think this year has reminded all of us None of us really know anything. We might think we do until we get up the next day and we see what happened and all of us go, this 2020, can you believe this? It's just stuff just keeps happening. So I don't think we ever really know, but this is one of those years. But it's a great question and a great point. But uh, our kids have handled it. Uh, they're excited to be here every day. And uh, that's all we can do right now. Along some of the lines, Coach, for you personally, you know, to <laughs> – for these circumstances to happen when you're about to take over in your first year as a program, uh, you know, I, I think those we've already gotten to know you well enough to know that you're not going to throw yourself a pity party. But because of human nature, when you do find yourself thinking about what could have been or why you're dealing with certain things, how long does it take before you kind of snap out of that, if you will, and kind of, you know, get back to the task at hand? Uh before we got to the walkthroughs, it was way harder. Getting to the walkthroughs and me getting to coach kids and be around kids, uh, it almost allows me to go to a safe haven 
where my mind is where I want to be until I come off the field then I have to deal with the world again if that makes any sense what I'm saying at all um, but I honestly I'll go back to our culture again and the very first time I ever saw you guys that pinky promise that I that integrity you remember me saying you, it's easy to be a man when it's sunny and 72 outside and partly cloudy where are you when you when you just get married and you got two young kids and you can barely pay your bills and, and you don't have enough and you're you got so you're charging this credit card and getting something on this zero percent credit card just trying to live each month which we've all been there don't don't act like you hadn't been uh that's when you find out about a man and that these are these moments right now we're, we're going you're going to look back all of us are going to look back at this time and go you know what utsa they held strong to that time and i i believe what you're seeing with this pandemic and all that's going on with social injustice you're seeing the strong do really well right now the, the strong and you're seeing the guys that aren't as strong it's tough right now it's very tough and uh we want to be in that category when this when we look back is going those guys are really strong and one of the worst possible times in the history of our country thank you coach jj you're up greg you're on deck coach what's the uh, anticipation like for you ahead of this fall camp you got to be kind of just itching to get out there on the field and kind of really work at these practices, aren't you? I am because I feel we have a really good coaching staff and we've got some nice players and we've recruited really well and we have a great job. And uh, we want to go show it. Uh, we, we want people to see uh, that we're about the right stuff and, and we've got some good players and a good program. So I, I, I am dying to get that out there. Uh, I love our team. Uh, I love how we uh, compete every day and show up with a mental focus. And uh, I don't know what our one loss record is going to be, uh, but I know we're going to get after people and we're going to be a hard out. I really do feel very confident in our players about that. Uh, I don't know what that's going to translate into wins and losses, uh, but I, I like where our team is and how excited they are about playing football. What have you seen out of your group of quarterbacks during the, this time you've been able to go through these walkthroughs these last few weeks? Um, you know, we're one of the few schools in the country that have four quarterbacks that have started FBS football games. Uh, so, um, where we feel really good about our depth, uh, obviously with walkthroughs, it's hard to separate yourself. Uh, but you know, we'll get some live shots here and, you know, we hope to scrimmage, you know, not this Saturday, but next Saturday. And that's when you can really tell about quarterbacks and, Whichever one of them can get their team in the end zone the most, be the one starting uh, that very first game. Whoever that's against, whenever it is, that's that's who it'll be. And just overall, coach, what have you learned about your team during the, the these last two weeks? Have any leaders emerged, or what, what? What can you say about this group now that you've seen them on the field a little bit? Um, I know our defensive football players really believe in Tyrone Nix. Uh, they have a lot of respect for him. Uh, you know, they're they're out there. We'll we'll start practice at 7 a.m. and they're all out there. You know, they gotta have temp check at 6:15. So that's one of the best things to come of all this deal is temp check because they're all way early. Because they got they want to go on that football field. They they can't have any symptoms, so they can't be out there. And uh, so they're out there early, volunteering, just getting their workouts in themselves. And it's it's. That's they're eager to play. Our offensive group, they love Barry Lunny. They they love to call him Barry Funny. Uh, he's he's a, he's very witty and uh, sarcastic, and those guys uh, really laugh and have a good time with him. And uh, then obviously with Coach Perry, he brings a lot of juice uh, as a special teams coordinator. And uh, those guys really are they they love their coordinators. And uh, I feel good about the staff we've hired. And but like I always say. It's always great. We're all still undefeated. I think the great philosopher Mike Tyson said it best. We've all got a plan until we get hit right in the mouth. So uh, we hadn't just been hit in the mouth yet on the football field. So we'll, we'll find out a lot more about ourselves when that, when that time comes. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Hey, Greg, we'll go to you, uh, then Scott Bailey. Hector, did you have another question? or? All right, uh, Jeff, Jeff, how has the vision for your schemes on offense and defense changed 
both as you've gotten to know the players a little bit and just as the circumstances of how you're preparing for the season has changed? Um, it's just going to be interesting to see how much we carry into the game. Uh, we're we're going we're going to throw a lot of mud up on the wall, see how much of it sticks. And when we find out who we're going to play and when, we'll decide how much we're going to take in the game. Uh, we tried to make these walkthroughs pretend like they were spring, if that makes sense. Now, we know it wasn't the physicality. We know it wasn't that. But we tried to make it where that's what that was. We tried to match our installs up. So now we go back. Now we're installing for fall camp. We're trying to make that like, fall camp, which it is. So we're, we're rolling as if all things are normal right now. And uh, obviously, if we play August 29th, which we don't know, we had to call back a lot. If we don't play till September 12th, we'll be able to take a little bit more in. Uh, so it's still one of those kind of situations right now. Okay, Scott Bailey, you're up. Hey, Coach, thanks for taking time, man. Thank you all. Um, how, how difficult is it for you and your staff coming into this new? So you've already got that challenge to begin with, and now you're having to prepare a team for opponents that you don't even know who they are. How, how, how where does that rank on your scale and your coaching history of tough, of the, the tough, 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 top part of the totem pole, so to speak? Yeah, I think because we hired such experienced coordinators, and I know I haven't been a college head football coach uh, yet, and y'all are getting to go through this together with me. Uh, I was a head high school coach for 15 years, and I, and I played in some very large uh, venues on some, with a lot of pressure. That helps. 15 years of practicing. You guys have done your jobs, too. You're, I guarantee you're a whole lot better today than when you first started. Just You can't replace experience, right? So my, my defensive coordinator, he's done it 15 years. You know, Barry Lunny Jr. was the youngest offensive coordinator in the country when he was at San Jose State back in the day. Tommy Perry's been a coordinator for 15 years. So it really helps having a veteran staff. Uh, that's helped me a lot. We've all kind of worked through a lot of puzzles together. But uh, I, I, I honestly feel this is going to benefit us because players have a lot of say nowadays. And uh, what goes on in the dark comes out in the light. And uh, we feel really good about where we are with our players. And we know how our players feel about us because they've had to see us deal with a lot of adversity since we've been here. Uh, and I hope they would all tell you to a man, uh, they haven't seen us change one bit. Uh, so I would hope that's what all of our players would say. I, one more, Coach. Uh, I, I know it's way down, way down weeks from now, months from now. But um, has there been any conversation at all about – how all of this scheduling changes, uh, how all the uncertainties of how many games you play or who you play, and everyone in your conference for that matter, uh, how that's going to affect how bowl game decisions are made? Uh, once again, I, I see that as a positive for us. It's, we're, we're, uh, our athletic director is on record. Dr. Compost is on record. She wants to go try to play 12 games. So we're going to try to play. And uh, – our kids are really excited about playing. I feel great about Dan Bellamy and Nick Turner, our, our medical staff. It's going to be a next man up mentality. Uh, we're, we're, we're going to be testing frequently. And um, if someone is positive and they contact trace some kids, it's going to be the next next person up. has got to go play. So it's going to be just like the 2020 year. I think the season is going to be just like that. It's going to be – we're getting to kind of get a dose of it, right? We're getting to watch – Baseball, we're getting to watch basketball right now. We're kind of learning this is where we are right now in our country and how we're going to get to play sports. And um, I think our kids are going to thrive in it. I really do. And bowl is – you're right. It's a long ways off. And uh, to even mention that is, uh, would be awesome. But we're, we're, we're a long ways from that. But I do like uh, where our kids are. Thanks, Coach. J.J., then Greg. Coach, is it fair? Um, is it fair to say you believe you have the talent to to field a winning team this season? Well, overall, how do you feel about the talent? You know, I've um, we've only been through walkthroughs, and um, I just think it would be 
unfair for me to give too much of an assessment right now. Uh, I know mentally I like where we are. Uh, I see some kids that are very hungry to be good, and uh, that usually goes a long way. Quarterback play uh, will be very important on any team, obviously. So that's the position we got to make sure we, we get right. Um, and depth um, is something we tried to address, you know, uh, as best we could. And we, we improved there depth-wise. But uh, we're to stay healthy and catch a few breaks and get some good quarterback play. Um, I think we can have a good football team. Thanks, Coach. Greg? Jeff, looking at the updated roster, you guys don't have any single-digit jersey numbers. Was that something intentional, or what's the significance of that? Yeah, it is. Um, we're going to vote on those numbers. And zero through nine, if, if we see a player in zero through nine that plays for us, you're going to know he's one of the toughest guys on our team, mentally and physically. He, he's on time. He's, he doesn't miss tutoring. He's not late to the weight room. He's not late to the training room. He's the first one on the field, last one off the field. Now, we've got some kids that deserve to be in those numbers. I was the opposite alignment. They're usually that way anyway, right? Well, you can't put them in zero through nine. And we have some kids that are in certain numbers because that's some, some tribute to their brother, some tribute to a friend of theirs. So that's not to say you're not in that number, you're not that way. But if they're in zero through nine, they're one of the toughest players on our team. And we'll vote those numbers in uh, somewhere through fall camp. Now, it's, it's getting, you know, it's just, uh, I know Stretch, Tyler Renard, my equipment guy is going to, you know, want to strangle me uh, because he's got to get jerseys done. And we got to get, you know, some stuff. We were hoping to have that done in the spring, and we just didn't get that pulled off because of what's happened. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's intentional. Okay, I don't see any other hands raised. If you if you have a question, raise your hand. Uh, otherwise, uh, we'll let Coach go. Get off to his next meeting. Well, I got a, I got another one. If that's all right. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, Jeff. I, around the country, we've seen where a lot of players have started to say that they're going to sit out the season just due to some of the health concerns. That's happened with you guys at all, or if you guys have had that conversation within your team about that option that's available to the players. Yeah, we have it every day. Uh, if, if they don't feel safe, we encourage them to not be out there. Uh, I don't want to coach a kid that does not feel safe. Uh, that's why I think we're going to thrive in this time right now. I really do. Our players know Dan Bellamy and Nick Turner and Ryan Philo and the coaching staff uh, truly care about them more than we do the game. And uh, we're going to do everything in our power uh, to take care of them the best we can. Uh, so we've had none of that. We talk about it daily. Uh, we, we don't want any child to ever feel that way. And we don't want their parents to feel that way. We're coaching their most prized possession. And uh, we're, I'm going to try to treat every single child uh, as if it's Jordan Trailer, Jake Trailer, and J.C. Trailer. And uh, I believe that's going to separate us from a lot of places just because of the mentality that our kids know. Uh, we truly care about them uh, more than we do uh, a, a silly game. But all the game is, man, is a carrot. It's just a carrot to make young men become better men in life. That's why the game of football is the greatest game in the world. And I loved coaching basketball and playing basketball. I had fun every day. I don't have fun every day coaching football. I don't have fun every day practicing football. It's a lot like life, you know, and that's why I love the game. It's the, it's the greatest game going. Uh, it's a great preparation for life. 